riding down the Harland Highway. All right, hold tight on the Harland Highway show. Harland Williams. You definitely feel good, though, right? Do I feel good? Yeah. With the, did you feel good enough to start or no? Let me, um, do you have a meditation room or something? Sounds like meditation. Yeah. If you want to do that instead. Yeah. I mean, whatever you do that stays silent. There's, and s- there's wipes. And there's wipes in there? Yeah. Yeah. Do you have neighbors that uh, they'll, do it, you. they'll, they'll do, do it for you? They'll do it for you. They'll do it for you, yeah, if you need a neighbor. If you need a helping hand, neighborhood yeah. watch, neighborhood reach, what's the diff? Yeah, right. Okay, well, should we hit the theme? You seem let's relaxed now that you've yeah, talked about pleasuring your... <laughs> Here we go, gang. This is the uh, Harland Highway podcast. You know it. And uh, incredible guest today. Unbe- I'm going to say unbelievable, phenomenal guest. Wow, that's a lot of pressure. Well, can I add one more? Sure. Uh, fantastic guest. Yeah. Did you say fantastic? Yeah, van. Like Scooby Doo. Zoinks. <laughs> yeah. Does he say fantastic? No, but it's in a. It's the the mystery van, the mystery machine. Oh, the mystery You're machine. You're in a van. You're, whenever whenever yeah. I think of vans, I think of Scooby Doo. Oh, really? Although now they're saying Velma, in the new movie, is a lesbian. Have you read it? Have you read that? Well, wasn't she always? Well, she always was, but now there's a scene in the new movie where a she's... pretty girl comes in and her eyeglasses fog up. Oh, wow. Yeah. So she sees her in a car wash? No, I think it's... You, her... you know, women get moist when they get excited. But their eyes don't get moist. Do they have clits hidden in their eyelids? I think the moisture comes up from her pants into her shirt. Oh. And then it comes up into her eyes. Which one is this? This is uh, Velma. Velma's the kind of, the, 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 the boyish looking She's kinda one. She kind of looks like a bookworm. Okay, yeah, that because yeah. she always wore that orange skirt so oh, the, the fumes the could fumes come out up. and up into her right, eyes right. and her bottle, her Coke bottle glasses. Yeah, that's why they made her sit in the back of the van. S- okay. And they cracked the window. Is she nearsighted, uh, farsighted, or I guess is there a new one, lesbian sighted? There's lesbian sighted. That's all she can see. Lesbians, but not right. real well because her 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 eyes are moist. Her eyes, that's right. Is that what you said? She has moist she eyes. Has moist eyes. Her yeah. moist glasses. Well, I think what happens is the the I I have I get very moist eyes too. I have to wipe my eyes all the time. I have like runny eyes. Like why? I don't know. My uh, my mom has it too. I think it's some kind of disorder. Well, I think it's called sadness. When your eyes start running. I think it's called being Irish. Yeah. You're you just, Irish. You just cry about the famine. You cry about uh, what the English did to us. Oh. Can you, it's, it's hard to imagine. Oh, this whole country celebrating the Queen dying and William and Harry and Andrew all dressed up yeah. in their military uniforms. Yeah. Like, like they all... Like they all fought in a war. They have medals. <laughs> yeah, like they won yeah. battles and yeah. things. And they live in a giant palace and yeah. watch big screen TVs. Yeah. Yeah. And and somehow we're, we all care. It's like on the news all the time. Like why do... Why, I don't care. I could not care less. Do we care here in America about the royals though? Do it's, we? It, we must because the news is playing it all the time. They must think we like it. It's weird. I get... Oh, by the way, Greg Fitzsimmons, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, you didn't say my name. Yeah, well, I didn't say, but Greg Fitzsimmons and last name Irish, right? Yeah, hundred. I'm 99% Irish according to Ancestry DNA. McCarthy on the mother's side. Really? Yeah. Because I did Ancestry DNA. Last time you were here, you left yeah. your coffee cup yeah. and I took a swab. Right. And it turns out that uh, you're not Irish. You're the hillside strangler. Oh. Yeah. That's the last time I masturbate in my coffee cup before I leave. Good night, Nelly Furtado. Um, I feel real. I think my eyes are getting moist. Jesus. I think my eyes just went moist. You must be a lesbian. I think I am. Are you a girl? I can be. Are you on Tinder? I'm on Grindr. I'm busy for the rest of my life. (laughs) Uh, but you're Irish, and so, so the royalty didn't mean much to you. But what about your parents, though? They must have loved them. It's funny because the Irish, I mean, we were literally, we've been occupied by the Brits for 800 years. And during the famine, 
They were exporting all the food. They yeah. let us die. They literally let us die. Yeah, right. And and then and then my relatives are all like enamored with the royal family. I'm like, what? What's the matter with you? Yeah. Where's that? Where's the Irish rage? Where's the grudge? I think I think it becomes so embedded in the culture, and obviously, it's they've got an older history than we do here in America. Yeah. And, you know, they don't have as many top-tier, like, movie stars and celebrities and the bigness of the United States. And so uh, the royalty is obviously just this big institution, and it's kind of like they're they're movie stars, I think, is what it is. And so I won't be surprised if a lot of them, like your parents, hate them, but, but, you know, sort of, it's like they hate to love them. Yeah. Or something. Well, it's that, what do they call it? Bunchausen effect when you when you start to have feelings for your captor isn't that Stockholm syndrome? I think <laughs> Munchausen. I mean, we can sit here and you can correct me for an hour if you call that a podcast. Well, I think Munchausen effect is a is a deli treat at a. It's a it's, I think it's a, actually an Oktoberfest wiener, <laughs> and I'm starting to wonder if you really are a lesbian anymore. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say, Munchausen? I don't know where that Wasn't came that from. Wasn't that one of Mo? Munchausen. I think that was Mozart's fourth album. I think it was his fourth LP, the Munchausen effect. It was no LPs in the 1800s. Well, he was blind. He won't know. <laughs> he was blind. What was he? He was, he was some kind of mutant. Beethoven was deaf. Well, why can't he be? He won't know I said he was blind. How about that? Screw him. Screw the pickled finger the whore. <laughs> Your eyes are watering. Eyes are watering. Wow. <laughs> so I'm the reason your eyes water. <laughs> you make God. you make my eyes water. Do you listen? Are you a classical music guy? Yes, very much so. Did you find as you started to get older, you you edged into that? Or w- were you always kind of that guy? I, well, when I was in sixth grade, we had this music teacher, Dr. Pearson. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. was a doctor. He was a doctor. Okay, and he... Taught music. And he taught music to okay, sixth graders. Okay, a doctor. So, you know, some people do a lot with their degrees and some yeah. don't. Mm-hmm. And so he loved opera. Yeah. And he used to bring us to the to the Met. We'd go to the Metropolitan Opera and we'd see operas oh, wow. like once a month. Like Italian operas? Yeah. Are, they, are all operas Italian? They're not all Italian, but the ones he brought us to were all Italian. Italian he loved okay. Italian opera. Okay. So we saw Tosca and Don Giovanni and, and he taught us a love for opera because he told us what was going on. And ever since then, I loved classical music because I realized the huge emotional capacity that that music has. Wow. Yeah. So you connected to it early. Very much so. But you were still listening to rock and roll and yep. stuff, right? He also taught us the Beatles. He was a Beatles oh, fanatic. Wow. And he, he, he taught us all the crazy uh, urban legends about how Paul died. You, you remember that, that, that Paul McCartney was, was dead? Yeah, he is dead, guy. <laughs> He's the only one left, isn't Your he? Your music, to, the doctor was right. Was the doctor a uh, mortician by any chance? Like, yeah, he yeah. is dead. Yeah, You know that, right? So is Jimi Hendrix, Jim Morrison, and Joplin. Paul McCartney's still alive. Eh. <laughs> well, I'd say borderline. I mean... I saw him on TMZ the other day. I thought it was Casper the Friendly Ghost out for a fucking shoe shine. It's unbelievable. He's looking a bit frail. Yeah, yeah, he's looking frail. Well, he's British. You know, they don't. Yeah. They don't have a good healthcare system over there. You age fast in England. You know, I want to believe that, but then I go back to the Queen who just lived to ninety-eight. I know, and her yeah. husband was. Uh, didn't he just die like a few years ago? I think he was just as old. Yeah, who was that, King Rupert or something? What was his was name? King Rupert, yeah. And you got to figure Charles has been waiting decades for this old biddy to kick the deeker or whatever the yeah, term is. Yeah, he's got royal blue balls at this point. He's been God. waiting. He, imagine the first time he got to put that crown on, oh. how that felt. Oh, God. Does, oh. He, does, he, does he wear a crown? Do they have a crown? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Because I don't know if you saw the ceremony where he had to sit down and sign something and he got all mad. Did you see him? Like no. It, it was like, it's, it's all over like the internet. It's his, the, his first act of like, I guess, signing the death certificate or something. And he, uh-huh. he sat down at the and he was like, oh, this pen is leaking. Give me another pen. And he like, all that pent up rage of waiting for the old Because he was never like that. Yeah, right. And suddenly he's like power tripping wow. like. 
Fucking Barney the dinosaur sitting Jesus. on a pterodactyl twat. <laughs> God. <laughs> what the hell does that mean? God. Psycho. Um, but I want to ask you something. Going back to being okay. Irish. Because I'm Irish too. Sure. Yeah. You, my mother's maiden name is O'Donnell. Yeah. And you know what? Answer this for me. Have you ever met an Irish person that's been offended by an Irish joke? I feel like we should be the example to the rest of the world to lighten the hell up. Yeah. Like we get we get called the potato people, drunks, Catholics, having too many kids. Like joke after I've never been offended once. I go, yeah, it's a joke. Mm. And and have you ever seen an Irish person online on the news and go, hey, enough with the damn Irish jokes? Yeah. Right. Ever? Right. No, it's a good point. And and it's not like we weren't oppressed. We were oppressed for centuries. Yeah. So it's not like you can say, well, that's because you're the you're the one that's in power, so you can take a joke. It's like we we had no power. Yeah. Yeah. And and as you said, they like starved us out and and then when we came over to the US, we were not necessarily treated great when we first got off the boat, right? We got off the boat. Uh, depending on, I mean, the, the famine was in the 1840s and we came over uh, at that point and we, a lot of us ended up in uh, the British Virgin Islands and we were held as indentured servants. So we worked like, really? literally so like slaves. With no teeth. No teeth. Did you say dentured? <laughs> You're an idiot. <laughs> I, what did you say? Indentured. Oh, okay. That's yeah. why they were virgins yeah. on the Virgin Islands. Yes, they're on okay. the Virgin Islands. Oh, yeah, I might go back there and yeah, Straight give it another down. shot. Sure. Yeah, it's a good place for you. Yeah. So, but what's the best Irish joke you've heard? You want Ooh. me to start? Oh, yeah, you start. Oh, God. Okay. The um, bartender shows up for his shift. The okay. other bartender is still behind the bar, and he's closing up. And he says, uh, "Okay, uh, here's what you need to know. We need." Uh, Two bottles of Jack Daniels. I need to restock the ice bin. Uh, and, and uh, oh, wait. No, I got to start differently. Okay. Two guys okay. are sitting at a bar. And the guy says, uh, he says, uh, hey, where, where are you from? And he says, I'm from Ireland. He says, oh, well, so am I. What part are you from? And he says, County Kerry. He says, well, so am I. Now, what part of County Kerry are you from? And he says, I'm from Ken Mayer. Well, so am I. What streets in Ken Mayer? He says, I live on Dublin Street. I mean, so did I. And just then the new bartender shows up and the old bartender says, you're going to need two bottles of Jack Daniels, refresh the ice, and the Shaughnessy brothers have been drinking again. It's not nice to have somebody on your podcast and ask them to tell a joke. And then strong arm, stiff arm. Well, guy, remember, if we roll the tape back, you asked me what my favorite Irish joke is. I'm going to need you to roll I, back the tape because I, I don't remember it happening. I didn't, I didn't ask you for your favorite Irish mm. joke. So, so, but what's, what's, the, what's best the best Irish, Irish joke, joke you've heard? You want me to start? Oh, yeah, you start. What's the best Irish joke you've heard? You want me to start? Oh, yeah, you start. So, but what's the best Irish joke you've heard? You want me to start? Oh, yeah, you start. Yeah. And, uh, but he, just the same. A guy tells a joke on a yeah, podcast as you know, a host. I'm going to be honest. You know. Can I be 100% honest? What? I don't get it. I'm honest, one comedian to another. <laughs> I'm not even fucking with you. I do not get it. The two brothers are so drunk, and every time they get drunk, they they forget that they're brothers. They don't recognize each other because oh, they're so drunk. Okay. okay. <laughs> it might have been that shrill, like, leprechaun being raped in an alley voice you were doing. Well, just, so am I! Jesus! God, it's really disarming, that voice. I mean... So some of us use punchlines. All right. Harlan Williams. All right, I'll do my, my right, Irish joke. Okay. <laughs> so, so there was this, uh, this schoolyard, and this, uh, this Irish pedophile came walking by. 
<laughs> and he he sees a he sees a young child in the schoolyard, and he lures the child with him, and and he takes the child's hand, and they start walking and walking, and they they get into the forest, and they keep walking and walking, and starts to get dark and a little scary, and finally the wee child tugs on the pedophile's jacket and says, "Mister, I'm scared." And the pedophile says, "You're scared. I have to walk out of here alone." I don't get it. <laughs> Even the timing on that was bad. Like it was Even off. Even the grasshoppers were. Yeah. The crickets. You know, there's a club. You've done it. Yeah. Called Supernova Comedy Supernova. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Outside, it's an outside. It's outside, one. and there's literally crickets. Yeah. And so when you're joke bombs, you literally hear crickets. Or a drive-by. Or a drive-by or sirens. Yeah, yeah there's a lot of noise. It's right in downtown Hollywood. Like, it's right on Hollywood Boulevard. It's like one of the sketchiest blocks in Hollywood. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I was like, one night I, I, I thought I killed because I saw someone laughing and yeah. slump over. Yeah, right. But it was actually a drive-by <laughs> bullet coming through <laughs> the wall and killing them. <laughs> And you tweeted, "I killed tonight." I killed yeah. tonight. Yeah. yeah, they had it coming. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a. That's how you drink on the podcast. Well, I like to slurp. Uh, yeah, yeah. You taste it more that way. Yeah, but I'm serious. I think that that you know everyone's so sensitive about ethnic and cultural humor, and you know Irish people never complain about it. And it's like at the end of the day, isn't it? the responsibility of all of us to just kind of recognize when something's a joke and Mm -hmm. something's not malicious. Mm -hmm. Is that fair to say? I think so. And I'll tell you what's happening now is uh, Asian people who could always take a joke. Yeah. Suddenly they're, they're the new ones that that, that can't take a joke. Is that right? Why? What, what what do you mean? I'm just seeing more pushback from the Asian culture against any jokes that are even slightly. Yeah. Sensitive. Well, th- that's the thing. You can't do ethnic jokes that are malicious and vindictive no. and racist. Like right. you can't drop in racial slurs and no, things that's like that. Bad. But if it's a fun, well-hearted joke aimed at the culture, mm. I, f- I feel like if you cut them out, you're in essence you're eliminating part of the culture. Well, and you're Canadian, so I would imagine yeah. you didn't grow up with a lot of diversity. We're in your town, right? Oh, on um, au contraire, oh, no mon frere. Well, Canada's like a huge melting pot. Yeah. On, it, it's, 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 it's really diverse in Canada. I think Canada. it depends on what part of Canada you're in, though. Like the U.S., there's some areas that are diverse and some Yeah, aren't. if you get up into the northern areas where it's like, you know, bear country and yeah. stuff like that, it, it's, it's, to be honest, it's mostly just white lumberjack type mm-hmm. people. But in all the cosmopolitan areas in the bigger cities, oh, sure. really diverse. And Vancouver, I come from Toronto, Toronto. Yeah. where they had like, like here in LA, it's like, it's like uh, African American area, uh, Latino area, uh, white area. That's yeah. what it, those feel like the three dominant. In Toronto, it was like Italian neighborhood, Portuguese neighborhood, mm-hmm. Indian neighborhood. Like it, it, every, every culture was represented. No, up I there. heard that Toronto is actually one of the most diverse countries in, the, in cities in the world. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's really. It and was, a lot of Jewish people. A lot of everything. Yeah. And that's what was cool because when I grew up there, when you went to school, you had everybody and everything. Mm-hmm. And so it was really, I'll be honest, the two things that were a, a bucket of water in the face when I moved down here was the the racial divides mm-hmm. and guns. Because yeah. we grew up, I'm not saying racism and all that stuff doesn't exist, but it's on such a small scale up there. Mm-hmm. And it was just, here it was, everything was... Blacks, Latinos, whites, black, Latino, white. and up there was just like it, it, you, you didn't you didn't think in those terms, mm, right? But that's just well. I think you didn't have a history of slavery yeah. the way we did here. That's I right. Think that's what set the tone for it. Yeah, and it's something that you know people go, I, I shouldn't have to feel white guilt. Well, a little. I mean, you should really? feel a little white guilt. You shouldn't feel no white guilt. I, I mean, it depends on how you define the word guilt. Yeah, I think there has to be an acknowledgement that. Something really bad happened not that long ago. 
Yeah, but isn't didn't something really bad happen to all of us? I yeah. mean, didn't didn't the Romans like feed the Christ, the white Christians to the lions? Yeah. Didn't the didn't the Incas slaughter the this? Didn't the Japanese slaughter the Chinese slaughter the Japanese? Right. If, 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 if you go back through all of history, is there any culture that wasn't touched by extreme the Brits, violence? The fucking English. Well, they, they took a pretty big pounding from Hitler. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that guy was just filling the it. sky with... I mean, have you ever seen those old newsreels of just yeah. London on fire? Everybody and, was in the subways yeah. hiding for months at yeah. a time. I mean, yeah. you know, and, and I'm not standing up for anybody, you know, whether it's black, Jewish, Christian. We, but what I'm saying is... We've all had it, you know? Yeah. And so then you got to go, well, shouldn't we all feel guilty? Shouldn't we all, like, I just don't think pointing it at, at one race is, uh, is stopping anything. Right. I don't know. When you, start, when you start putting an arrow on a culture's back, I, I just feel like, what's the point? Yeah. We're, all, we're all in this together. Right. So you, it, it's like he said, she said until, what, what does it prove? Yeah, I think it's just a matter of looking at where, looking at the numbers just empirically where certain races are in this country right now and how do we work towards uh everybody being uh, succeeding at, at the same rate yeah and right now it seems like there are some uh there are some organizational things that are in place that are working against some races you know i i i there may be i don't know i i kind of come from the school where you make your own opportunity in life and, you know, you, you look at people in the white community, the Asian community, whatever community that are downtrodden and living in, in squalor. And you look, at, you look at people in all races who are millionaires and billionaires. I don't right. know. I don't know. I, to me, that's part of the problem, dividing everything up. Right. I don't know. Maybe, right. maybe I'm wrong. I, I well, don't comedy know. is a way of talking about it. Like, this conversation wouldn't be happening on another podcast. Comedians can actually take these issues on because we have opinions and we're not afraid to say them. And I think a comedy club is a great place for issues to get hashed out because yeah. when you can laugh about it, it takes a little bit of the steam out of it and it lets you go like, okay, I can kind of see that. Yeah. You know, like what you were just saying, you made some points with me. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that to me is a bit tragic too. It shouldn't be like comedians that that are only have the wiggle room to talk about that. Everyone should. This I know, is, but thank this God is it's America. us. I know. Hey, but now not even, they're saying, what I love though is that they're saying, no, comedians can't either. And we went, no, we can. Yeah. Like every comedian they tried to cancel then did like an arena tour the next year. Yeah. And they were like, no, you can't really cancel us. But also, you you know, it, you, what I hate about the cancel culture is they assume that everybody that's saying something that might be a little edgy or controversial is malicious. Yeah. It's all about intent. Right. You know, if somebody has a conversation about race or, or wealth or politics or economics... Well, what is the intent behind that mm -hmm. person's word? Are they are they a good person that just wants to engage in a conversation, or are they being racial and are they being slanderous and are they being mean spirited? And I, I think and also in the course of that conversation, you're going to say things that might be a little bit off base, and then the other person is there to say, "Hey, you want to check? You may want to check that." And then you go, "Okay, let me think about that." And you go back and forth, and you can start yeah. to have some attrition and some understanding. But you can't have a conversation if you can't have mistakes. Yeah, exactly. And, and I'd, I'd go one step further. I don't even know if we need to have someone there to check. And I get what you're saying. Yeah. I just feel like people have always should just say what they want to say. Mm -hmm. And then you know who they are. Right. You know? and, right. and, if, and if it emerges that they're kind of got a bad streak or a mean streak, then that's who they are. Mm -hmm. And you can decide if you want to engage or, or participate in what they have to say or just move along, you know. Mm -hmm. But... We, we've become this kind of country where everybody's checking everyone and everyone's walking on eggshells. And, yeah. You know, as a guy who came from Canada, that's not why I came here. I didn't, mm -hmm. I didn't, I came to America because it's the land of the free, you know? And yeah. yeah, people can say shitty things, but you move around the people you don't. It's like watching TV. If you don't want to watch that, you move it, right, you know? And right. if someone's a, a purveyor of hate and hate speech, then, you know, there's there's laws for that stuff mm -hmm. and they should be dealt with. But anyways, yeah. God, look right. at us getting What happened all, to that? Holy God. 
Wow. Well, yeah. look at the Irish guys caring, huh? The Irish are, you know, some of the great politicians in the history of this country, you know? And what's funny is the Irish used to be the liberals. It was oh, the, yeah? Ken- the Kennedys. And, oh, yeah. And now the Irish have all become the uh, on the right, you know, McCarthy and uh, McConnell. And yeah. it's, it's a, they've, they've swung way right. Huh, interesting. Yeah. Wow. The Irish, what a... Did we help build the... Uh, Statue of Liberty. That was the French. Right? That was the French. Did they ship it over here? I think they they started with a small model because I've seen different sizes of statues okay. of liberty. Okay. And then when they got to the biggest one, they they built that over here. But I think they built the smaller ones in France. So it was built here. Yeah. Are you sure? Positive. Hundred percent. Wow. I thought it was built there and they they shipped it over on it, but that would be be far too large, far too large for that. And FedEx didn't exist back then. Did UPS? They didn't. They they had UPS, but they didn't have FedEx and UPS won't do packages that big. They won't do bronze ladies. Huh? Yeah. Interesting. Right. Although they just opened up the, um, the torch on the Statue of Liberty. First time since COVID started. Are you serious? Oh my God. I can't wait to tell my arsonist friends. (laughs) Um, three, four... (laughs) My arse and his friends. Yeah, I met them on Match.com. <laughs> there it is. Too soon. You're on fire, If I'd Arlen. done that in an Irish accent, <laughs> it would have been a funny Irish joke. <laughs> By the way, we, can we do, since we're Irish, for our Irish uh, fans, yeah. can I set the t- stopwatch and we do an, uh, a one minute of Irish voice conversation? Sure. Just, just for, let me yeah, get yeah, the, yeah. I think we owe it to them. Yeah. Oh my God! Here we go. Let me get the. Got to have the stopwatch. Yeah, you don't want to go too long. Yeah, just just a minute, and just you know, it can be just a camp conversation about anything. You okay. ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. So how you doing there, Greg? Boy, ah, I'm doing good. Boy, it's a, a soft day out there, hey? Oh, the wind's blowing through the heather, and uh, I saw Johnny uh, McGillicutty over by the uh, the cliffs the other day. He was ah. throwing breadcrumbs to the geese, you know. As he was, he was thrown to the geese, and the geese are out there. And you know, the beautiful thing about the geese is that they uh, they'll shit on the grass, and it makes it just as green as Ireland can be. Well, did you hear what happened with this weird child, Conan? Conan? Yeah, he slipped on some geese shit, rolled down the hill, severed both his legs, and now he's got Irish nubs. Now, isn't that interesting? Because when you're drunk in Ireland, they say you're legless. So would you say his boy is legless? I'd say his boy's a fucking drunk. He's a fucking drunk, isn't he? That's why he slipped on the fucking goose shit. He was drunk five tits to the wind. I know. I I wouldn't be walking around drunk with, with geese shit around. You don't do it. Well, you just don't do it if you want to keep your legs and we're out. <laughs> Fucking nice Come guy. On. Wow. And I think I was a little county carry and you were a little county cork. Cork, yeah, yeah. down by the sea. Have sure. you been down to cork? Many times. Oh, I, you know, that's the one place as I, I want to, I'm thinking of moving there because as uh, the the uh, global warming, the uh, waters are rising and yeah. I want to live in cork when uh, the water gets real high. It's going to be high in cork. Well, I'll be the only guy with my house floating out to sea. Right, right. I, we were supposed to go there this summer, and okay. then, um, you know, the COVID got so bad that oh. uh, everybody was, flights were getting delayed, and we finally said, let's go next summer. So we got a house, we already have a reservation for a house in West Cork, what, in Bantry. D- like a, like a Airbnb? Yeah, we got a, it's a, it's a, a eight, eight room house. Me, me, my mom, my sister, what? and all my cousins are all going over there in August next summer. Hey, check out the Irish, always popping out kids, huh? Right, right. And you're not even mad. Look, you're smiling. No, it's, because it's a sign of virility. Oh. Uh, success. One of the, you're one of those guys. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm like, uh, uh, what's his name with the uh, electric cars? Elon Musk. Yeah. He likes to have kids. Yeah, and you're what? You, a long tusk? I'm a long tusk. Yeah. Well, let's get to this because you do have a big Irish family. And uh-huh. um, Greg wrote an incredible book. Tell us about this book because these are like stories about your your Irish heritage and your family yep. and and uh, give us a little uh, pre ramble on this book. Well, it is a um, it's a it's it's filled with letters. It's based on the idea that when I was growing up, whenever I got into trouble, and yeah. a letter got sent home. My parents would read it at the kitchen table and then they would laugh like if it was from the principal. What? Yeah, like police. Like I would get arrest report. Once There's one where there's an arrest report 
where I was, uh, uh, I got into a fight yeah. in, a, in a bar when I was about 16. Okay. And it was, and I had snuck out that night. My mother didn't even know I was gone. Okay. I got out of jail and I get, got home the next morning and she said, where were you? And I was like, oh, I was just out with, I was just out with Tommy. We were just, you know, playing some stickball. And then they got the newspaper the next day and it said Greg Fitzsimmons arrested at 3.45 a.m. at the Tarry Inn for disorderly conduct. What? And they saw it and they, th- they thought it was funny and they would laugh. And so I was kind of encouraged at a young age to do things. It didn't matter if he did something that was bad as long as it was kind of funny. Really? Yeah. So and crimes usually crimes, hilarious. There's a lot of vandalism. I was, hilarious. I was a vandal. Hilarious. And, and there was uh, letters from teachers that would say, you know, uh, there was a guy named Dewey Ektal. That was the, the art teacher's name. Dewey. Dewey. Okay. And so he wrote a note home saying that Greg, I, I was walking by in the hallway and Greg started saying, the grass was very dewy this morning, wasn't it, Mr. Ektal? Mm. And are we going to learn the Dewey Decimal System? Now, remember, I'm in fourth grade, yeah. so they're not yeah. killer jokes. It's and not- also, anyone watching doesn't remember any of this, you know, stick ball. Right. Dewey Decimal System. Right, like, right. I don't think anyone watching lived in the 1400s. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember the Dewey, the Dewey Decimal System? Uh, yeah. It was the most archaic. It was ridiculous. It, it was, was impossible. Crazy. Yeah. It was like this long filing cabinet. Yeah. Like this huge, and it had all these little cards in it. Yeah. And, and the numbers didn't equate with like, like you know, uh, French history was somehow next to science fiction, in, yeah. but but their numbers were similar. It was it was archaic. It was almost as if Dewey got smacked in the head with a two <laughs> by four by Braille. You know what I mean? Like it was like it was like for people that could see but didn't have a fuck what they would. You know what I mean? It was so confusing. I think the librarians kept it hard because they wanted to keep a job. That's what because how hard said. would it be? Right. How hard would it be to just put the books in order? Right. Just alphabetical. We're done. Yeah. Or Man. how about a librarian with half a brain? And, you know, you say, hey, where's the uh, book about the blah, blah, blah? The, you know, like at the grocery store, yeah. aisle 12. Sure. Right? right. Right. I mean, yeah. memorize something, you librarian fuck. Well, a lot of them went into porn because I've seen a lot of porn with librarians in them. So I think that oh, okay. siphoned a lot of workers out of the market. Oh, because they, oh, they have those the gla- the sexy glasses and the and the hair is up in a bun. Oh yeah. But then when they left those good paying union librarian jobs, they yeah. started letting the hair down, yeah. taking the glasses off, yeah. listening to jazz, taking it right in the Dewey Decimal System. <sighs> yeah. 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 Do you remember right. any of the titles of any of those porns that you watched? The librarian porns. Yeah. Um, uh, Booker was one. Oh yeah, Booker. Booker yeah, uh, there was um, uh, Ben that page. Ben that page. I remember that, was that a, one. That was, it took yeah. place in Senate. It was a, It was like a yeah. congressional hearing. With it was a man boy thing. Maybe I don't remember it. Mm. Now that you say it, it was. Um, I think I'm thinking of Bend it like Beckham. Oh yeah, yeah, sorry. yeah, yeah. right. How's that soda? It's moist like your fucking eyes, I'll tell you. That much. <laughs> now, where can people get your book? I have no idea. I would imagine oh. on Amazon. I mean, oh, good. You, you go to Amazon.com and you can get that book. But if you go to yeah. Craigslist or something like that, you could probably buy it used. I can't even imagine what it's selling for used these days. Well, let me look it up. Well, you're doing that. I'm going to pull out my little book. Dear Mrs. Smith. Look at this book. What's that? Called Crave. Oh. And it's, uh, it's a collection of short stories. And, you know, I find it interesting that we're both Irish. Yeah. We both do comedy. We both write books. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to ask you again. Are you on Tinder, bro, or what? I can get on there. Whew. Yeah. I'd be willing to get on there. Okay, bend it. I mean, I mean, uh, do it. Yeah. So when did this come out? Uh, this came out about uh, five months ago. No kidding. Yeah. Wow, congratulations. Thanks. Same thing. It's available on Amazon. Can but I take a look at yeah, it? Yeah, it's called Crave, and it's a collection of short stories. 
And, uh, you know, I thought it'd be interesting to see what you're, you know, ask you about your writing process. Like when, when you sit down to write this, what's it look like? Are you a guy that has to shut off the family and go in a dark room? Or can you just write on an airplane? Or like, how does it go for you? Well, I have ADHD, so it was kind of hard for me to really sit and focus for long periods of time. Why? You said you had AC. No, AD, ADHD. Oh, okay. High definition. Yes. Okay. High definition AC. AC. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It sounds comfortable, but yeah. yeah. So you have, okay. So what I would do is I got a, a recorder, a voice recorder. Okay. And I have an office and there's a, there's a park across the street from the office and I would just, I would think of a story that I wanted in the book and then I would walk in the park and I would hit record and I would just say the story. And so oh, I would just cool. walked around for a couple months yeah. saying stories into the recorder. And then the recorder had a software program that would take the, um, the audio and yeah. write it out for you. So that way I didn't have to type out all the stories. And because they say writing is really rewriting. You know, once oh. you get an ugly, fat, rough draft, yeah. then the real work starts where you go in and you can. But I'm good at, I'm good at changing. Right. I'm, good at, I'm good at rewriting. Right, right. It's that initial draft that I was having a hard time. Really? With. So I spit, I spat it all out. Yeah. And then I had it, I had it written out on the page, and then I rewrote, and then, and then I would just go to my office um, at night after I'd put the kids to bed. I'd go to my office and I'd work until the morning. Yeah. I'd work all night. That's a tip for for like emerging writers too. I f- I find that. You can get kind of blocked like that, but you, what you said is exactly you. You just gotta like spit it all out. Yeah, get it on the page, write it. Don't don't worry about finessing it. I've met a lot of people that said, "Oh, I want to write a book. I want to write a story," and they're their own worst enemy because they never. Oh, I wrote a few lines and I did, but but you almost gotta just like blurt it out. Yeah, and look at that kind of like the chunk of clay and then you got to kind of mold it, you know? And not judge it. You can't yeah. judge yourself early on. That's yeah. what that's what stops us, I think, is when we critique ourselves. And if you yeah, can just like think point. about, like watch children at a playground. Well, you shouldn't, you can't. But for a normal person to watch kids at a playground, it's a giant improv. That was One just ki- a joke, by the way, that the pedophile walking the kid into the forest. So I, I can go to a playground oh okay yeah. oh i thought that a, was a real thing that, that was an irish you. joke yeah. oh oh i should have known from the brogue that you were kidding yeah uh, but anyways continue the the uh so you watch kids, kids. at a playground yeah. or you watch kids play anywhere yeah. and it's an improvisation one kid sits down and he's got a he's got a box because his mom just got a new ipad the new ipad yeah and he's playing with that, and he's throwing it like a frisbee, and then the other kid puts it on his head, and and then the second kid goes along with it, and he goes, "Okay, you're the king," and then uh, I guess I'm the court jester, and then he, uh, you know, would would do some of your bits, like he would do some Harlan Williams bits yes. yeah. as the jester, yeah, and, and it, but smart kid, but it all pl- it's all play, and they never judge themselves, and they never wonder is this funny, is this interesting, yeah. they just play, and it comes out, and that's anytime you're in the zone creatively. And I mean, you are, and I, I don't want to blow smoke up your ass. I think you know this, but like nobody looks like they're having more fun on stage than you are. And I think you truly find, <laughs> you do, you find that place when you're on stage that's playful and creative yeah. and people are engaged with it. And it's, it's an experience that's different every time. And, and I don't think, and I, there's a reason why you and I are both at the age we're at and we still go work for $20 at the comedy store on a Tuesday night yeah. because we fucking love it. It's so fun. And and audiences enjoy it because we're enjoying it. Yeah. We wouldn't yeah. still be doing it if, it if it was work. Yeah. I, I absolutely love it. You know, you, you wonder at the beginning of your career, is, is this just going to get kind of monotonous? And, and, and you even see guys. You know, I saw guys earlier in my career that had only been doing it like seven, eight years. And they were just like, I fucking hate this. Yeah. And, and I, I, in my head, I was like, shame on you. Right. Shame on you for even going up there and, and creating this facade. Like, this is comedy. This isn't torture. Like, yeah. if you don't feel it, if you're not having fun, if you're not, get the fuck off of there and let someone who really loves it do it. Because you're right, the audience feels that too, yeah. and they, I think they feel when someone's just like putting in the time, you know. Well, and you just mentioned that one of your neighbors used to be the great Richard Jenny, and he's the yes. guy that I used to watch, and he was a journeyman. He loved being on stage. He yeah. loved writing. He loved crafting. He was a guy that I would see him at the improv, and then at one in the morning, he would 
email me with taglines to my jokes wow. that he'd been thinking about. Wow, yeah. He, he just was in it. He was one of those guys, and I, I know this sounds weird, but he physically just looked like the quintessential comedian. Like, yeah. I would go up to Montreal to the comedy festival, and, you know, there's Jeff Froxworthy, and there's uh, Stephen Wright, and there's... Uh, Did you say Froxworthy? Is that his name? You said Jeff Froxworthy. Froxworthy. That's yeah. uh, Jeff Foxworthy's brother. Oh, it's his brother. Yeah, the mentoid. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> And he's not even from the South, yeah, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> he's, he's, he's like a, he's a tough kind of New York. I am hey, MJ Froxworthy. Froxworthy, eh? Hey. You know you're from New York when you uh, find a corpse in your bedroom and it's your wife, you know? Hey, you know you're in New York when you go to start your car and it ain't your car because yeah. you're stealing it. Yeah. But, uh, but Jenny was this guy, like you'd see him walking around and, you'd, you know, if someone said, hey, draw me a picture of a of a comedian, like a 1980s, 1990s circa comedian, yeah. he feels like that. that's the image I always saw. Like, he just looked like that guy with to me. With the blazer, with the sleeves yeah, pulled up. Yeah, with the sleeves, kind of semi-good looking and mm-hmm. kind of a little hyper, a little energetic. And, yeah. Uh, but everyone else felt more quirky, you know? Like, yeah. I have no chin and big ears, and Stephen Wright had that crazy hair, and mm-hmm. Emo Phillips looked like he was from another planet. But, yeah. you know, every, everyone had... But but he just kind of personified what a, what a comic looked like to me back then, right. which sounds weird. No, he was like at the middle linebacker of a comedy. He just was a... He was a journeyman. He, he, was, yeah. he worked. He loved working, and he was great at it, and... Uh, yeah, that was that was a shame. What about uh, poor Judy Tenuta being gone? I love oh, Judy Tenuta. Yeah, yeah, she just died, yeah, right? Yeah, she was fun. Oh yeah, she was such a weird, like, full of, you know, she sort of some some comedians kind of bubble comedy. You uh-huh. know, she was just like when you ever see like a spring coming out yeah. of the ground, okay. she just kind of bubbled that silly kind of perky yeah. comedy, and that that's okay. really sad that she's gone. Man, we've yeah. lost a lot. Know, of comedians in the last like five years, you know, just the last year, yeah, we've lost so many. This Saget was a bad and Norm year. Norm Macdonald and Louis Anderson and Anderson, Gilbert Godfrey Gilbert. and yeah, damn, and then, um, couple of couple of comedy store comics that are gone now. David mm-hmm. A. Arnold. Yeah, there was a oh yeah, it's just been been weird. But that kind of brings me to um, I don't know if you've noticed these. Mm. It's Halloween, and if you want to turn yours oh. over and turn, there's a little light switch on the bottom. That's fun. This is going to be the Halloween, one of the Halloween episodes. Oh, fantastic. And so I'm hoping, and maybe you don't, but maybe you do, I'm wondering if you have any, like, scary stories from your childhood or from your life where something of the occult happened or mm. something scary happened when you're out with your buddies or with your family or something that really, like, freaked you out and frightened oh. you when you were any any I'll weird... tell you a crazy story. Oh, here we go. Here Here's we go. Halloween, story. Halloween ghost story time, gang. So when I first started doing comedy, yeah. I I was uh, roommates with Joe Rogan's girlfriend. So he used to sleep over the house every night. And so I came home one night and he That's... was out he was out on a date with her. Okay. And I, I was coming home alone, so I stopped at Blockbuster. This is how long ago. Oh, Remember boy. Blockbuster? Yeah, isn't that where you're playing stickball in the parking lot? Yeah. yeah, right. And Velma was there. She she had the van out front. Wow, were the windows steamed? Yeah, well, she had a, a Super Legacy Outback, which I thought at the time, yeah, that's a red flag. Yeah, and so uh, I rent Batman. I rented the the very first Batman. Oh, movie. the I Tim Burton one with with uh, what's his name? The uh, who's the, who's the the comedian, the actor? Yeah, Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton. Yeah, that yeah. one. Yeah, it was okay. the first one. Got it. And so I rent it, and I go home to our apartment, and it was kind of a dark apartment on a side street. Ooh. And I put in the movie. Yeah. And I'm sitting there watching it, and it's and it's scary. You know, it's a scary movie, but it's a heavy movie. Yeah. I mean, I'm not like frightened, but it's like I'm, I'm a you're you're on edge, and all of a sudden, I'm home alone, and there's a shadow what? in the room. There's a shadow. Come on. And I and I I, I look up. And, and I, Harlan, on my mother's life, a bat 
was flying around the apartment. Shut there were, up, there no were bats in the neighborhood. Yeah. And a bat had gotten in through oh, the window. Wow. It, was, it was summertime. Wow. And it was flying around the apartment. And I freaked the... I'm like, did this come with the... Did yeah. I not notice the Blockbuster's <laughs> yeah. running a special? It was in they the said- box. <laughs> it was in the little thing when you open it. Yeah, right, right. And so... So I get scared. I don't know what to do. And uh, I, I put on a, I put on a, I got a baseball hat on backwards. I got on sunglasses and I got a tennis racket. Oh, and I'm, and I'm bats just, don't play tennis. <laughs> I'm just, and I'm, I'm kind of, I'm more hiding from it than chasing it. Yeah. And then uh, all, and this goes on for like 20 minutes. And then all of a sudden the door opens and Joe walks in and he's got a pizza and he's with his girlfriend and he sits down and he goes, what the fuck are you doing? I go, there's a bat. I go, there's a bat in the apartment. And he takes the he takes the tennis racket and he takes like four steps down the hallway and he whacks the bat and kills it. And then he just sits down and eats the pizza. Wow. <laughs> and I'm standing there with glasses on and hat on backwards. You was it a baseball hat? Yeah. Oh, dude. Yeah. And when you say the shadow, like it was just like a shadow yeah. like moving because it was flying through yeah. the light. Hey. Isn't it weird the one night you rent Batman, that happens? It's the only time in my life that a bat has entered a place that I lived, and it was the night I watched the I first Batman. I love those Batman. scary coincidences. Yeah. I actually had, that reminds me of a story I had when I was in college. My college girlfriend's name was Peggy McEwen. Oh. And great girl, wonderful sure. girl, just love her to death. And, and my best buddy at the time, my roommate, was a guy named Reg. And so we went, uh, we were in Toronto and I used to, I, I love scary stuff. You know, yeah. we, we, we used to like to find ways to scare ourselves. And there was this huge graveyard in Toronto called Mount Pleasant. That doesn't, that sounds like it, an it, oxymoron, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it sounds kind of just like a moron really. And uh-huh. it, it just, this thing went forever. Yeah. And one night we were walking, we said, let's, let's cut through the graveyard. It was like late at night, like 11 at night, and the moon was up, and it was summer, and it was just like kind of a creepy night. And, and so we were cutting through this graveyard, and you know how it is with buddies, you all have your like little catchphrases and your little cliques. Right. And you're always doing little sayings back and forth to each right. other. Like you, you suck at first, like little... Little sayings. Little sayings. I yeah. don't know about if that was one of uh, ours, right. but you right. know. Probably more. Uh, okay. Well, whatever. That, I, I, that's yeah, just one that popped sure. in my head. Yeah. I don't know that, that we use that mouth. a lot. Yeah. It just seemed yeah. like yeah. Seemed something like. that guys might say. Yeah. And Mount yeah. Pleasant. Yeah. Mount summer Pleasant. night. Yeah. Full moon. I don't know. It's Toronto. <laughs> what kind of childhood you had? If you wore those shirts then. <laughs> It wasn't called Mount Pleasant because people went in to pleasure themselves. Oh. I, in fact, why was it called Mount Pleasant? They're all fucking dead. Yeah. Should be called Mount Misery yeah. or something. Yeah. So anyways, I, <laughs> I had this girlfriend, Peggy McEwen, and me and Reg were walking through the graveyard. It's huge. It's sprawling. Like yeah. You get in there, you can't see other buildings. It's just got the big old trees. Like There's morgues. There's big... It's one of those traditional uh, graveyards that still has the big tombstones yeah. with angels on them, uh-huh. like a really like gothic sort of graveyard. And just to be goofy, Peggy, my ex-girlfriend, she used to dance a certain way. You know, everyone kind of danced in the 80s. They had, and every person had their own kind of dance. And we go to the socials and dance. So for no reason at all, right in the middle of the graveyard, I just, I just blurted out to Reg, I go, Peggy McEwen dance, and I start like just dancing like her, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, ah. yeah. And then we look down, and the grave I'm standing on, it says McEwen. No. Right on the grave. You were dancing. Right, on. and it was spelt the same way. And we just went, what are Whoa. the odds? It freaked us that we, we got the hell out of there. It was freaky, man. Wow. But it's like your bad thing, like just what are the odds yeah, of this? Yeah. Is that called serendipity? No. What's that called? Uh, I think that's serendipity. It is? Yeah. But you're not, I can tell you're not sure. I'm sure in dipity. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Then I'm going to accept a, accept a dipity. Okay. What you just said, a dipity. Can I tell another crazy story? Please. Hang on. Let me move the, let me move my guy near you. So my father died, which I talk about in my oh, book. Oh, Sorry. 
and uh, which is spooky. It is spooky when a parent dies. You know, is it spooky or sad? Was it spooky or is it just sad? I guess it's spooky. How old were you? If you're a kid, it's sort of spooky. I was 24, I guess. But you found it spooky. Okay. Well, he was only 52. Oh, that's so that's not, spooky. That is, yeah. yeah. Okay, you you get it. So he's dead, and yeah. uh, we we have the and you know with the Irish families, it's a whole process. There's two wake, no four wakes. Wow. There was a there was a Wednesday there was a Wednesday during the day, Wednesday night, Thursday during the day, Thursday night, and then Friday was the funeral. And so, and we have a big family. We had a, my father was a very popular guy. He was a radio announcer in New York and he had a lot of friends and oh, he, wow. he was very, buses came up from New York City to the. Wow. To the, How many were at the funeral, would you say? Probably 600. Wow. Okay. 700. Wow. That's and a lot of respect. So it was a lot of uh, entertaining for us. It was a lot of work. It was, a, yeah. and then we, and then we all kind of just collapsed. It was like, you know, he was gone and. Now we're back at the house and it's me and my mother and my brother and my sister. And we sit down and we're like, let's just pop in a movie. You know, my mom worked at the New York Times and she worked in the arts and leisure section. So oh, wow. the guy that was in charge of reviewing VHS, because they there was the movie reviewer and then there was the guy that reviewed them once they got to video. Got it. So he had a crush on my mom, even though oh. she was married. He was probably happy that my father died, I to be honest. I think he was happy. Yeah. Was he the best dressed guy at the funeral? First one there, last one to leave. And he had flowers, not for the grave, I bet. They weren't sad flowers. They were happy flowers. Smooth. Smooth operator, Charday. So he gives her tapes all the time to bring home. So we had this stack of videotapes underneath the TV, uh, underneath the, the VCR. Yeah. And so my mom goes, why don't you uh, pop in a, a movie? And so I go down, and I just reach in. I grab a movie. I pull it out. And it was a movie, and the title was... That man. <laughs> the title was Daddy's Dead, Who's Got the Will? Come on. I swear to God. And we laughed. We must have laughed for 15 minutes. We needed a good laugh. What? Couldn't stop laughing. Yeah. I've never heard of this movie. Look it up. Daddy's Dead, Who's Something Got like the that. Will? Dad's Dead or Daddy's Dead, Who's Got the Will? And was your dad there? Because Irish wakes, the body's often propped up in the house, right? Was, that, you, was your dad in, in that the house would have been, still? That would have been back in Ireland in like the 19th century. When you're playing stickball. When you're playing stickball okay. and renting Batman on yeah. VHS. A lot of VHS stories in this podcast. Yeah, a lot of VHS. That's weird, isn't it? Well, I'll tell you if, if I can Maybe you should put the podcast out on VHS. On VHS. We're going to do this on... We're going to yeah. get it transferred from digital to VHS. Right, right. And let, let all three people I mean, because so, so many comics think they're cool putting their stuff out on vinyl. Yeah. You put your podcast VHS. out on VHS. And for an extra $4, I'll put it on Laserdisc. Oh. And spin it on your sister's face. <laughs> Um, <laughs> you want a sister with a big nose, yeah, oh, a big yeah, pointy nose, big pointy yeah. Dutch apple nose. Yeah. Uh, but one of my my little first forays into getting a taste of I don't know fame or a little bit of celebrity or something in this town, which we all have. A, I'm no freaking A-lister, but we've all had our moments where we've had a moment to shine and done sure. a movie or a TV show or something. And and so when I was new to the town, it it doesn't resonate any more than when it first starts to happen. Like when you go from being a guy from Boston or Toronto or, oh yeah, I've headlined clubs and now, well, now I'm on the uh, Tonight Show or now, you know, so suddenly something happens where you 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 go from kind of here to here, yeah. and in your own head, it's like monumental. And so I'll never forget there was a blockbuster near my my one bedroom townhouse over here in Hollywood, and I went over there and I used to walk over and get the movies. And on the curb, you know the cement curbs where you park your car, the little cement like those. Do I know what a curb is? No, you know, not a curb, but the cement like things to stop your car from going into the next. Sure. You know, those cement. The curb. It's not the curb, but it's you place them there. Like a curb segment that goes at the yeah. front of the spot. That's right. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for understanding. And uh, they would paint them blue, yeah. the blockbuster colors, and they would put like famous celebrity names oh, on them. Oh, did they? And then one day I went in there and I was driving. 
And I pull up and I drive in and I look on the curve and my name no. on the on the thing. Really? And I don't know why that resonated. Like that that almost felt more like I guess it because it was the first thing that was sort of a public, you know, recognition of yeah. anything I had done. And and for some reason that was my star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame That's moment. Amazing. Like it was so. That's st- really cool. It's really stupid, really. But to me, it really, um, it really, I don't know. Did I you felt- get a photo of it? I didn't because this was pre cell phones. This was yeah, like a, who carried know, a camera I around? Know. You know, I would have gone back. Yeah, taking a photo. But I was so like excited by that stupid little thing, and now of course you know Blockbuster's gone, and oh, you know what my. Uh- my moment was? What? I hosted a game show on MTV in 1997. What was it called? Idiot Savants. And I was I was 16 down on the New York Times crossword puzzle. No. Yeah. Oh, see? That, that's yeah. amazing. That was a pretty good one. Yeah. Yeah. I still have that. I don't know that I've ever been uh, in a crossword I'm puzzle. I'm sure you have. Really? Yeah, I'm sure you have. I mean, uh-huh. a name like Harland, that's a great crossword name because it's got... A lot of vowels in it. It's got an H. Yeah, it's eight yeah. letters. Yeah, it's a good one. Do you have vowels in your name? No, just Fitzsimmons. You don't have any vowels. Just Fitzsimmons. Isn't I a vowel? Fitzsimmons. No, there's an I in your name. It's fit. Look, it's look. That's a fit. That's yeah, an that's I. a that's a misspelling. Oh, so it's just Fitzsimmons. Yeah, but isn't O a vowel? No, that's a um, that's a zero. Oh, Fitzsim zeros. Yeah. Okay, but there's an e here. That's surely a vowel. That's a, I was in a fraternity. That's a Greek letter for. Oh, okay. It's theta. So it's Gerg Fitzsimis. Yeah. This kind of sounds Greek, but mm-hmm. you said you're Irish. Well, you know, my favorite kids' joke is. Uh, oh, I think I know it. I think I know. There's this pedophile, and he walks up to a schoolyard, and he says, uh, takes the kid out to the woods, and and the the kid says, hey, mister, I'm scared, and the the pedophile says, you're scared. i got to walk out of here alone. alone. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Okay, okay. I think I I I already told that one earlier, though. What What do you call a fish with no eyes? Fish. Wow. Yeah. Wow, bro. It's a good one. Should I end it? Should I end it on uh, on a really one of my favorite like cheesy jokes? Oh yeah, as long as it's not about pedophilia, because yeah, people no. are going to start to talk. Yeah, it's yeah, gonna yeah. Be chatter online. Yeah, no, this is this is a clean, fun yeah, joke. Yeah, good. And then then we're going to get to the final segment here. But oh yeah, you'll like it. Um, this is this is a joke where uh, a bear walks into a bar. Uh-huh. Okay, I don't know if you've heard this one or not. Bear walks into a bar, walks up to the bartender, slaps down a $20 bill right on the bar. And he says, bartender, give me a gin and tonic. And the bartender says, hey, what's with the big paws? (laughs) Right? That's good. I should have maybe done it in an Irish accent. Should I do it again? It always helps. Okay, let me try it again. Okay, try it again. And in the spirit of us being Irish, lad. Yeah. Oh, this big, giant, burly bear. I, I, let me be the bartender in the joke, okay. and I'll be from Ireland also. Okay, fantastic. This big, giant, burly bear goes stumbling into a pub. He walks up to the bartender, slaps down 50 quid. He says, bartender, give me a gin and tonic. And the bartender says, Hey, lad, what's with the big paws? I'm a fucking bear asshole. I got you, lad. Let me bar for you. Fuck you. You insulted me. I'm going to fly over this fucking bar and rip your fucking throat out. Fuck the drink. I'm a large carnivore. I'm going to eat your fucking arse. This one's on the house, lad. Okay, then. Fair enough. Fuck you. Fair play. Suck me. <laughs> that's the Irish. See, we we went right into the Irish. That's the, you should have set the clock again. You gave him an extra twenty seconds. I know, but see that that's the fun of the Irish. We yeah. can we can go there, and and that's maybe that's my final address uh-huh. to the pot. Everybody, lighten up. We're all Irish at heart. 
unless someone's being mean or malicious or racist, just everybody enjoy each other. Half the fun of being human is the ability to laugh at, at each other and celebrate each other with humor. It's not always people trying to be mean. So, so think about intent and uh, put a smile on your damn face. It's only a joke for fuck's sake. For fuck's sakes. Did I tell you I was with your sister last night, lad? Eileen? Uh, she sure does. That's why I brought her a fucking new leg. Fuck's sake, lad. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going we're to switch <laughs> cultures here as we close out. <laughs> We are oh, going to Holland, wow. and this is what we do with all our guests, Gregory. <laughs> this is called Words from a Wooden Shoe. Uh-huh. And what we do is we have our beautiful, special, fabulous Irish guest. You reach in. You don't look. You pull out a word, and if it elicits a story or a memory or something, you can share it with okay. us. And if not, we'll just put the shoe away. So reach into Words with a Wooden Shoe. And see, uh, see what we get. What's it say, guy? Celebrity crush. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Ooh. Wow. It well, be. it does. Ma- it makes me think of a David Feldman joke, mm. where you know you get your hall pass with your uh, yeah. wife. That means just so they don't, they know you're allowed to cheat. Yeah, so his is Angelina Jolie. That's his. That's his celebrity crush or his okay. hall pass. Okay. And then he said, uh, you know, but then we got older, and uh, and I said to my wife, hey, yeah, uh, can we update our, our our hall passes? Yeah. And she says, uh, okay, sure. She goes, mine used to be uh, Tom Hanks, but now it's uh, Harlan Williams. And then he says, well, uh, mine was Angelina Jolie. Now it's uh, the babysitter. My celebrity crush was, mine was Angelina Jolie. Yours was? Mine really was. Whoa. I just, I, I still, I think she's magnificent. I think Gorgeous. she's physically just uh, like, uh, it's like an artist conceptualized beauty. And yeah. that's what she is. Just her, the cheekbones and the eyes, everything, the body. And, and so I'm in love with it. And not to mention, I think she's a great actress. And yeah. then she does all this great philanthropy. Yeah. You know, she adopts kids from uh, all different countries. Yeah, yeah. She collects them. She, she's the IHOP of adoption. That's right. Yeah. And so, and so uh, I'm working on the Ellen DeGeneres show yeah. at the time. I'm a writer on the show. Sure. And then we're doing, it's St. Patrick's Day. And so, oh. and again, this easily, for another race, I was asked to dress as a leprechaun. Right. For the cold open of the show. Right. And to go out on stage with a pot of gold. Yeah. And then Ellen was going to chase me around the stage with the pot of gold. And again, by today's standards. Can you imagine? Culturally insensitive. But that's Can the thing. Can you imagine We asking, Irish don't care. We have fun with it. What if you had asked a Chinese writer. Right. On Chinese New Year to run around with a gong and wear like a, yeah. a geisha outfit. Or and something. again, if you're just able to look at the fun side yeah. of it, then that's all right, it is. That's right. the point I'm yes. making. But with the Irish, we'll do anything. We'll we do don't anything. care. We don't care. Yeah. So I'm backstage and it's a, the show's about to start and I'm sitting on a director's chair backstage. And I've got on uh, three quarter length knickers. And uh, Irish shoes with pointy toes, yeah, and a and a green and a green vest and a green coat <laughs> and a little uh, bow tie yeah. and the Irish stovetop hat. Oh. And I'm sitting there and I'm laughing, uh, you know. I'm like, okay, who walks over but the lead guest, Angelina Jolie? What? And she walks over and she sits down about six inches from me in the chair next to me, and I. I can't breathe. I can't believe wow. I'm sitting this close to Angelina Jolie. Whoa. And it's just us. There's nobody else around. It's just oh. us alone. And then I just looked at her and I said, uh, hi, how you doing? My name is Greg. And she burst out laughing. And it was like, remember in Fast Times at Ridgemont High when uh, when uh, Jeff or whatever. Spicoli? We, not, not Spicoli. The, the, the brother. Oh, yeah, he's, yeah. He's dressed up in the uh, fisherman's outfit. Yeah, yeah. And he's delivering, delivering the, uh, food. And the yeah. woman laughs at him in the yeah. car. It was that moment. And she oh, laughed at no. me. And just as she's laughing at me, the curtains open and I got to run on stage and run around getting chased by Ellen with the, with the <sighs> gold coins and it. So you, you're, you're one moment to be in front yes. of your crush. 
<laughs> and you look like a dementoid from the 53rd dimension. And she just out and out laughs in your face. Dude, were you crushed? Crushed. <sighs> crushed. I could not get that out. When I got off stage, I could not get the... Um, look, my eyes are tearing. They're te- you're Thinking watering about up. It. Yeah. 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 Oh, my God, yeah. dude. Brutal. Well, I, I got to finish on... on a, might have been worse. My... Oh. So my my crush was Daryl Hannah. Oh, okay. Of when I saw that married movie, married to Jackson Brown. Are they married? They were. No, she's married to Neil Young. Yeah. You got to get your country singer straight, guy. No, yeah, she was she, married to she was married. She to, dated Jackson Brown and then married Neil she's Young. She's married to Neil Young right now. There's an upgrade. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and she's uh, apparently leaving him in about a month and uh, shacking up with Willie Nelson. Because who doesn't love black gums? <laughs> <laughs> so, so when i saw daryl hannah in blade runner when it came out uh-huh. in the 80s like blew my mind i just I, I said man i'm going to hollywood one day when i meet her that i want to marry that girl and then she did some other movies uh summer lovers she did sure. a, that movie and you know she did all these great movies but just a stunner you know beautiful yeah. body and she was always sort of my Marilyn Monroe, like, dream crush. And then uh, John Lovitz opened a comedy club about 10 years ago. Do you remember the John Lovitz comedy yeah, club? Yeah, at Universal. Yeah, so John Lovitz from Saturday Night Live opened a comedy club. And he called me up and he goes, hey, I'm doing my opening night tonight. He goes, I'd love you to headline it, you know. And, and I go, yeah, man, I'll come headline your club. It was, it was the first night. And so I go just thinking it'll be a bunch of tourists sitting in there because it's at the Universal City Walk. Yeah. And I go in and the cast of Friends is there and the cast of, um, what's that, uh, the show Modern Family's there. Big um, Bang Theory. Uh, they might have been there. I don't uh-huh. remember. But the guy, uh, who's the, the Marshall guy who directed Pretty Woman, the director? Gary Marshall. Gary Marshall was sitting right at my feet. Wow. Like he was... If I put my feet forward, he was just sitting there looking at me. So all these people are here, and he puts me up last, right? I'm like he's got David Spade goes up, Tierra Carrera, all these all these celebrities, yeah. and he puts me on last. I'm the headliner, so I'm doing the longer show. Sure. Everyone else did ten minutes. I'm mm-hmm. supposed to do like twenty five, and I'm honored to do it. And 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 you know I love love it, so it was great. And so I go down. I'm up in the green room. I go down. I'm waiting to go on. I've got literally about a minute before I go on and, and love it to say, so what do you think? Uh, great club, isn't it? And I'm like, yeah. And he really does talk like that, by sure, the way. Sure, you nail it. Yeah. That's great. And, uh, and, and I go, this is great, man. Look at all the celebrities. He goes, yeah, look at all my famous friends. There's, uh, uh, you know, someone from Friends. There's Ed O'Neill. There's, and there's uh, Daryl Hannah. And I went, what did you say? He goes, there's Daryl Hannah over there. And I went, you're joking, right? And I look over, and Daryl Hannah's sitting there. Dude, 40 seconds later, I'm on stage. This hasn't happened my whole comedy career. I've been doing stand-up 35 years. Yeah. My brain frazzled. No. I, couldn't rem- if, I couldn't remember the lines to my jokes. I couldn't remember anything. No. I'm telling you, it j- it's almost oh. like someone put an electric current <laughs> and everything. And I was up there. I was up there. And, and Gary Marshall's just looking at me like, and this is, the, I'm the headliner. Yeah. And this could be a career maker for you. Just oh. bombing. And finally, after about six minutes, I just went, folks, I'm clearly bombing up here. I'm eating it. And let me tell you why. I'm in love with Daryl Hannah. When I was a kid, I fell in love with her. I said, if I ever meet this girl, I'm going to marry her. John Lovitz told me she's sitting in the crowd. And holy crap, I can't focus, folks. I can't even think of anything. So that's why I'm eating it. And and that was it. And then I got, I got the hell off stage. And then... You know, everyone sort of kind of clapped. Yeah. I didn't know what was going. And I went over to Lovitz. So I was like, holy shit. And he goes, you want to meet Daryl? And I went, holy shit. So I went up to her. And I just went, you made me bomb up there, Daryl. And she goes, oh, you're so cute. And she hugged me. Oh. And I was just like, oh. and I said, you're so sweet. I said, I really do think you're the best. Like, we had, we had a nice little moment. Yeah. And that was it. But, dude, it fried my brain. I've never... Wow. 
had that in my life. Like, not even with the worst heckler on the worst night. Yeah. It was just frazzled. That's crazy. Yeah. Because as a comedian, people think, oh, you got such an easy job. Like, bands, they got a three 18 wheelers pull up. They got to tune yeah. their instruments and a sound check. And you got to make sure you know the word with us. Really? We just show up, but we need to be mentally facile. We need to be yes. present. We need to be confident. Like it's a state of being that if you don't have it, you can't do your job. Yeah. If yeah. you are not emotionally and mentally centered, yeah. you cannot be on a comedy stage. And in 35 years, that only happened to you once. Once, yeah, amazing. And it was at that moment. Yeah, it was well. Now, you, just for clear, you said facile. Facile is that in in here anywhere? Because I don't know that word. Facile. I made it up. Yeah, I, I didn't. Think, I saw you try and slip it by. Yeah. You said we have to be would, facile, and I would look it up. Except well, you don't have Wi-Fi in your house. Let's not, because it's it really it's not really a word, is it? I, I think it is a New York Times. This is a writer, ladies and gentlemen. And the book's amazing. He can write, but every now and then a writer will try and slip one by you. And you know, let, let's here's just the take, definition. Oh God! Um, it's appearing neat and comprehensive only by ignoring the true complexities of an issue. Superficial. Okay. So I used it completely wrong. Yeah, but here's I I I have it in my book on page. 212, and I used it completely right. Danny looked into Karen's eyes. They were moist. They started to water. He said, Karen, let's go facile the kids out of bed, and we'll go to the facile museum. And, you know, maybe get this book and not so much this one, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Folks, get his book. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. He has so many fun, hilarious stories in yeah. here. And uh, you'll get a, a good insight into the Irish humor that we yeah. have. And we hope it infects you. And everybody uh, has a great sense of humor. And let's all lighten up. And let's all lighten laugh. up. Laugh. Yeah. Let, let's all laugh and have right. fun. Uh, anything else you want to plug before we go, buddy? Well, I do the Fitz Dog Radio podcast, yes. which you've been on several yes, times. amazing. And then Sunday Papers podcast with Mike Gibbons comes out on Sundays. What? Okay. We cover the news. Is this a new one? It's, it... We started during the pandemic, so it's been oh, two wow. years, two years or okay, so. Okay, cool. And then I got a bunch of tour dates coming up in Tampa and um, Fort Worth, Texas and Chicago. Go to FitzDog.com for tickets. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, one more time, where can they get this wonderful book? That's on Amazon.com. Yep. Yeah. So check it out, folks. This is the man, Greg. How do you say it? Sounds like sounds like a librarian saying shh, which is probably what you want, isn't Cause, it? Because they're reading that book. Yeah. Maybe they don't want to be disturbed in the library. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here. Greg, thanks for thank showing you, up. Thank you, Ladies thanks and gentlemen, for having me on. Oh, my pleasure. It's what a really treat. an honor. We'll have you back for more right. of the uh, Irish magic. And until next time, everybody, chicken chow mein, baby. You know there's a bat and I have a bat. Yeah. Great mime work. Why Isn't that good? You, why didn't you do that during the podcast? I spent two years in France learning spatial. I, but yeah. why, why did you bring that out after we're done? Well, because this is coming out on... Uh... Oh, it's going to be on VHS. I forgot. I was thinking it was audio. You know what? Take your book back. Take mine and then give it back to me. Ha, ha, ha.